All right, there are more blanks in TTRPG. Okay. So here's fill in the blank to our pri previous discussion. Player deaths. Why aren't there more player deaths? There should be more player deaths. You know, I think the uh, the possibility that your character, that you lovingly created and spent a lot of time in, in building and, and uh, growing, the po real possibility that that player can die changes player tactics. Yeah. Right? And, and to be that bought into your character is the level of role play I'm looking for on tables. You know? Every time you play with somebody, it's just like, so you say it's a, it's, a, it's a gold dragon sitting on a horde and he looks like he's ancient? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So what's this party of third level folks into? <laughs> I'm running in there and I'm going to hit you. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, but if, you know, the possibility of death was more prevalent. It would change I mean, there. Hold on a second. Maybe we have the little hobbit over there stick on that little make him invisible ring thing he's got and he just slips in there and grabs the gem we need. Yeah. Whatever. You know, you start thinking different ways. You play different ways. Um. You know, back in the day, video games in the 80s, there was a lot of video games. When you died, your ass went back to the beginning. That was all the way through There the was 90s. none of this save nope, you just spots start and waylay points or whatever the hell they call them, waypoints. Um, they didn't have the technology to. Occasionally, you would find one later on that had passwords that would get you to a certain point, but you wouldn't start out with your thing. So you played different. Yeah. Right. There was when no you risk know, taking. when you know, if I die fighting this thing, then I'm just gonna respawn right outside right the door. Back there, the path that I walked up to to get to this thing. Well, yeah. There's no. It's different, right? Yeah. And so in TTRPGs, it's consequences. That one. So so player deaths. That would be a good one. So one of mine is really specific, and one is kind of vague. My vague one is consequences. I'm kind of like what you're talking about, but like I really like it when our players and our choices affect the outcome of the world. Like we're actively shaping the story. Um, like there was a campaign where you guys did a thing and, and helped, you had to choose either to help the government or to help the rebels. And depending on how you guys decided to go, I had like three different endings that would happen after you guys finished the thing. It was like, this is how many people died if you helped the government and what happened afterward. This is how many people died if you didn't do anything. And this is how many people died if you helped. And I gave you guys these like. That was an epic uh, yeah. adventure and encounter, by the way. It was. So we guys. thought we'd played it well and put the right guy on the throne and turned out. He was just as much an asshole as the and last guy. And he ended up causing like a more massive brutal. amounts of death by inciting all these like rebel riots. But I really like it when y'all's choices affect how the rest of the story goes out. I really like that. The more specific one is a personal thing, but I really like festivals and like lighthearted moments in campaigns where it's not story driven. It's not anything. It's just like, you know, a nice night at the tavern, like the, the smoking pipe. Like those moments where we had just these nights in the tavern where we were, you know, role playing of merriment and and storytelling and just being tended you know togetherness and not just constantly driving the story driving the story driving like i really like those moments of levity where you're not really accomplishing anything but you're enjoying the atmosphere of your game it's, it's fleshing out the world full yeah. of, you know all those little so i guess my things are consequences and rewards <laughs> That's what I want more of in D. Sounds like you want more filler arcs. I do. I do like filler arcs. I mean, I like the one overarching part of anime. I didn't put in my campaign. I do like <laughs> you know campaigns that are very, but I, I like it when you kind of weave in and out of that main storyline, and you can see how your choices on the outside when you're in these like filler arcs, and the time you let progress from when you let the big bad guy escape to when you meet him again, and all the shit you did in between. Like, yeah, you spent six months, uh, you know, chasing a bar maiden around trying to you know get lucky. He did some shit while you were gone. <laughs> I like that kind of stuff. For me, that's just that, that's how you build a world and make it feel more immersive. Not what about you, John? How would you fill in the blank? Why aren't there more blanks in 5e? Why aren't there more humans in 5e? No. <laughs> I think he's going to bring that up anyway, but 
Are you? All right. I, I could. Go ahead. Well, yeah. let me explain. <laughs> we have been hearing this more than once tonight. Yeah. And I was very <laughs> surprised when he came out with something that was not this. Well, I had a different topic that was about the human things. And, you know, I don't think it passed mustard actually get be written down on the on the list. The way you worded it was weird. The way I worded it was weird because it you was know, a weird at topic. some point, you know, all the easy topics are gone and you have to start getting creative with it. Humans have almost disappeared from 5e. There are so many cool races and classes and oh my god, is it ever gonna stop being the age of the tiefling? Right. Right. <laughs> well, those came along and people are still just and don't get me wrong, tiefling's a cool race. And then we brought in the dragonborns and then so many of the monster classes have become playable races. It's just like what is there? What is the draw for playing a human? I can get plus one to everything as I start out. Or I could take variant human and get plus one to one or two things and take a feed at, at first level. After that? Not much. Not much. So humans become kind of the boring build. They do. And so you don't see a lot of human characters in D&D &D anymore. Why aren't there more dances in in five, you kind of get to your festival thing. That, by the way, was the first word that came to my mind this afternoon when I dances. wrote, well, why aren't there more blank <laughs> dances? Yeah. I guess you could homebrew them for bards. That's true. It's sort of hard if you're not personally a dancer, though. Because if you tell me you're going to dance, I'm going to make you role play it. If you're trying to <laughs> role play it and you're like, I do a genuette and a... a how about B and the DMs like you? What? What? Can you get up and show me? So it does end up being something where like nobody knows what you're talking about. Whereas if the bard says I do an acapella rendition of blah blah blah, you know that's a little more universal knowledge than dancing terms. Yeah, that's true. You could probably get into the weeds there. Or if you were like performance bard, well, I'm respecting my blocking and move into... <clears throat> <laughs> like, I bet Celia you stepped could, over my line. <laughs> Celia could probably come in and just wow us for five minutes of not knowing what the hell she's talking about because... I was never into theater. Like I, I know, know the word it, I would know what she's talking about. I, I don't know what it is, but I know it's something theater people talk about. Blocking? You used it right. It's like your movement on the stage. Like where you, you stop you stop here, you say these lines, and when somebody else says here, you move to this other spot on the stage. So you used it right. Good good on you, man. Why aren't there more dragons? Or dungeons and dungeons and dragons. And we had a dungeon in your wild mount we game our excited. last session. And you have met one dragon. Yes. Didn't fight it though. You tried Didn't to fuck it, it though. Did not. You wanted to. I was smitten. Timidly smitten. <laughs> crushing on biscuit. the biscuit in her human form. I kind of like the idea of using things like dragons and uh beholders in ways that aren't you have to kill this thing no, I, because no. they're interesting characters. Yeah, you made it as a really cool plot way for me to get to use my way of the dragon monk like class and it was a really, really cool tie in. I think it kind of made the uh, dragonborn in our group a little irritated that <laughs> I had this like dragon figure that was like, hey, we'll be buddy buddy. <laughs> well, she would have been buddy buddy with her too, but That's, she was kind of. She was asking about their paranoid. tie. <laughs> yeah. She's like, like, are you going to pay me? Yeah, she came in as a tax collector. <laughs> well, I don't care who the IRS is. Like, I'm not paying taxes. <laughs> why would I pay a cut that eventually ends up in my pocket? True that. <laughs> No, yeah, there's a lot but, of things. You know, in 40 years of playing D&D, &D, I could probably count on two fingers how many times we've actually battled a dragon. 
I think part of that problem too is dragons, unless you throw a young one, which I think we fought a young one in, in one of your campaigns and one of your campaigns. Yeah. But like maybe a, it was just hers. It was like underground, half water. He was like on a pile of gold in the middle of this like underground lake. How tropish. Tropish. But it goes back to what you were saying. Can't throw that at a first level crane can't, hand. Can't, right? Yeah. And we rarely make it past like you know, level five, it's time to reroll characters. <laughs> usually adult or ancient dragons are very high level. And, like, when you start talking about beating up a young thing, unless it's... It can doing, be a little cringy. It a can cringy. be. Like, maybe if it's attacking a city, like, currently attacking a city, and you've got to stop it, like, then it's okay, but... Uh, just it's, busting into the nursery to beat up a kid is not cool. <laughs> It's not. <laughs> yeah. And I was sort of afraid that you would try to fight Biscuit when you, the dragon, when you guys encountered her. And when the tax discussion came up, I was like, oh, no. Then he's got to decide, is Biscuit going to attack you guys? <laughs> <laughs> no. More cosplay in d and I want to see more people at the table dressing up as their characters. Why don't you paint yourself green? Typically, because I have to go to work the next yeah. day, and uh -huh. you know that stuff does not wash off on the first time. Fair. That's well out of my commitment to anything. You've cosplayed here. I have, but it's been like closet cosplay. I'm not painting myself. <sighs> More Oreos in D and D. More Oreos in D and D, definitely. Well, I imagine if you, like, the entire universe and ecosystem of D&D, it is underrepresented. But not at our table. There's usually three packs of Oreos for any major session. Always the peanut butter pie. Those are delicious. They have them out. Those are really the only kind of Oreos I really like. Like, the chocolate ones don't do it that much for me. But the peanut butter, I'm a peanut butter boy. <laughs> I like to say it like that. <laughs> I love me some peanut butter. Mm. No. Son, that's not my lotion. That's my peanut butter. <laughs> Holy crap. <laughs> <coughs> you remember that video? Yes. <laughs> so why aren't <clears throat> there more damsels in distress? Yeah, where's the princess in the tower? I, mean, I don't think we've ever done a princess in the tower type trope. We haven't done it that tropishly, but we have done random people needing help. No, I want, like, your princess is another castle kind of bullshit. I do. I want at least one damsel in distress. This shit's boring. Hey, here's a good one. Yeah, it may not be good. <laughs> here's one I want to talk about, <laughs> right. which is my... <laughs> Definition of this is a good one. Why are there more wars slash battle scenes in D and D? It's very hard to coordinate once you get to a certain number of people. It weighs down in time, and D and D doesn't really have the rules for it. There is in Savage Worlds a subset of I've seen a couple different systems ways to do huge combat, and I haven't found one yet that. Seems satisfying. And that's probably me. why. Uh, so, but, it, yeah, you know, it, I think if I was to do it in, in 5e, I think the only way you can really do it, and somebody will correct me, I'm sure, um, which is cool because I'd be, love to hear a good way, is narratively you would describe the whole battle waging on and then the party being it one section of the battle and what's going on there. And there could be ways, you know, there was the uh, the last bit of, of uh, Salt Marsh that we did where you guys were taking over the... Lizard. You know, and the folk. lizard, it was a li it used to be a lizard folk fort, but the Sahigan. fish folks, the Sahigan had, had taken it over, right? So that could have big battle stuff and based on had you done this 
before or had you killed these guys before, then it would affect other right. areas of the battle. Um, but yeah, I think you just put put the folks in uh, the party in one specific place and, you know, their job in the battle is to hold this gate or to take that hill, right? And if they take it, then it has implications for the rest of the battle. And if it's a long drawn out battle, then you could, you know, after they've done one thing, then, you know, a little runner comes over and says, they need you at the South gate now, right? You go yeah. and you could do some of that, but just, I would love to see a good way of doing huge epic battles in D and D so that you could have some of that siege the castle kind of thing. Yeah. I think you don't do it very like, cinematic Lord of the Rings style where almost theater of the mind you'd have to describe to them that Would you like a box or should yeah, I describe exactly. it to you? Uh, no, but you have to like describe to them running through this battle there's chaos and they see this one guy makes eye contact and he's coming in for the swing what do you want to do? And you kind of just narratively like work them through and explain you know over here you see a you know, man get you know severed in half and you're trudging up the hill. you'd have to, to me, theater of the mind would have to be your friend there because logistically on a, it would be a lot but I, I agree. More big scale battles, but not. I don't want to play like battleship. Like I don't want to move like a right. battalion. And it's not <laughs> uh, Napoleonic miniatures on a ping pong table, yeah. and I'm moving my regiment kind of stuff. That I would... want to envision my character running through the fray and slashing people down. You have a little, you know, random table that you can roll on, because you know, you take any of these things like uh, uh, Vikings or the. Uh, what is it called the Last Kingdom or yeah. some of these other movies? They have those big battles, and invariably, just like you say, he locks eyes with Ragnar, right? right? And so they run over and they start fighting. There's a bunch of people fighting all around them. They're just not paying enough like, fucking attention. This dude right over here that just killed his guy. How come he doesn't turn around and help Ragnar? Right, right. And so you could bro, you know, you're in this big battle. Get ganged so, up on. No, by the way, a dude just came in and started it's helping Ragnar. One. I think it turns into a really big time consideration it does. pretty quick. But I still would like to do it. You know, I still think it'd be pretty fucking baller. I'm going to let somebody else DM that one. Yeah, like I said, I haven't seen a fast system that was either not too clunky and, and chunky on how you do it I think or it was too fast, right, you know? Everybody rolled dice, but okay, the battle went in this guy's favor. Well, that wasn't satisfying at all, you know. Um, Modified chase rules, I think, would do, like, Savage Worlds chase rules, you know, where there's just, like, you roll for complications, but, you know, if you can move ahead of them or whatever, but, like, use that that template, but instead of, like, movement, it's, like, your actions in the Where the, the front warp. is moving, who's pushing it, the... Right. There you, is, like, a progression meter yeah. mechanic that some TTRPGs use that that kind of sounds like... So many successes helps move your, mm. your line forward. Yeah, I, I think there's ways to do it. We just maybe... Yeah, similar to it. the Savage Worlds uh, dramatic task rules, right? You, know, you have to have this many successes before this many failures. Yeah, yeah and then something you like could, that. You could narratively and cinematically work your way through the successes. Yeah. The storytelling of that would be epic. Yeah. Absolutely epic. So I'm glad we had that discussion because now I want to actually try having some big thing like that. Yeah, me too. I'd like a big thing. <laughs>